In this video, we're going to be taking a look at estimating decimal products. Now the goal for today, and you're going to want to write this down in your notes, is that you want to be able to round decimals to whole numbers so you can multiply. So any decimal that you see, we want rounded to a whole number whenever you're estimating. You want to make your life as simple as possible. Now the tip for the day, and I want you to write this down in your notes, it's important to know that after rounding, there should be only one digit with value. All other numbers must be zero. Okay, so it's really important to write this down in your notes. So when we go to multiply, we're only multiplying two digits by each other. Okay, I want you to follow along with these three problems as I do them for you. Let's say, for example, we have a problem of eight and five tenths times seven. Okay, now what we do first of all is we're going to start on the number at the left and then move to the right, the product to the left, I should say. Okay, so we underline that eight. We always want to round to the largest place value. Okay, we'll underline that eight, we'll circle that five. Now we know that five is obviously five or greater. Okay, so because of that, we're going to change that 8 to a 9. Okay, remember my key tip, there's only one digit with any type of value. All the other numbers will be changed to a 0. Okay, so that 8.5 gets changed to a 9. I'm going to multiply it by 7. I don't have to do anything to my whole number because that's already um, where it needs to be. Okay, we're, so what we'll do is just multiply 9 times 7, and that's going to give us... 63. Now this would be considered an overestimate and the reason why is we change that 8.5 to a greater number which would be 9. Okay so let's take a look at a problem such as this one. Okay now the first thing you will always want to do is whether you're um, looking at the problem in a book or on the computer you always want to write it down first in your math journal. So this is what I've done. I've written it down. Now it's time to start rounding. I always want to go to that largest place value. Now the largest place value for this number is the hundreds place. Okay, I don't worry about the decimal or anything else. I just look at that largest place value. Now I look to the place value to the right, which is the tens place. I can see that eight is obviously five or greater. So because that is five or greater, I bump that nine up one, making it a 10. And then just remember that the only digit with value is the digit furthest to the left. So I made that 9 into a 10. Then all the rest of these digits get turned into a 0. My 8 gets turned into a 0. My 6 gets turned into a 0. Now I do not need to write point zero or decimal place in 0. I can just keep that number at 1,000. Okay, now I go to my next factor. I look at the place value furthest to the left, or the largest place value, and then I underline that, which would be my 2. I can see to the right of my 2 is an 8. Okay, 8 is obviously 5 or greater, so I change that 2 to a 3. And I can just leave out the rest of my factor because I don't need to write 3.00. Okay, now that I've rounded my digits, or my factors, I can multiply just like we've been doing. Okay, I find that basic fact of 1 times 3, which will be 3. And then I can tack on my three zeros at the end. So I multiply my basic fact, and then whatever zeros are remaining, I will tack them on at the end for a total of 3,000. Okay, so let's say I have a problem that's written vertically versus horizontally. Same exact principles apply. What you'll want to do is just write this out horizontally. So I would just write this out 94 and 8 tenths times 1.5. That'll make it a little bit easier to figure out. Okay, now now that I've done this, what I want to do is I start rounding. I go to my largest place value here, which is the tens place. I can see that to the right of that tens place, I have a n the number 4. Obviously, 4 
is 4 or less. Okay, so I keep that 9 the same. It's important that you don't make that 9 into an 8. That's an easy thing to do. But you keep that 9 the same. Every other digit gets turned into a 0. My 4 gets turned into a 0. My decimal point and 8 can just be left alone. Okay, because that gets turned into a 0. It doesn't have any value at all. Now I go to my 1 and 5 tenths. I go to my 1's place, my largest place value. I look to the place value to the right, which is my 5 and the tenths place. Okay, I see that 5 is obviously 5 or greater, so I add one more to my factor, making that 2, making that 1 into a 2. Okay, now what we do here, we just multiply our basic fact of 9 times 2. That's going to give me 18. And then we have a 0 left over, and we're going to tack that on at the end. So 94 and 8 tenths times 1 and 5 tenths can be rounded to 90 times 2, giving us a total of 180. Now we're going to do these next two problems together. So first of all, we will do 12 and 1 tenth times 15. So the first thing we will need to do is write this out again. So let's get out your math journal and pencil, and we'll write this out together. 12 and 1 tenth times 15. Okay, now that we have our numbers written out, we want to start rounding. We always round to the largest place value, the number that's furthest to the left. We underline the 1, and then we're going to circle that number to the right, showing that we need to key in on that. Okay, so we look at our 1, we look to the next door neighbor to the right. 2 is obviously 4 or less, so we keep that 1 the same. That 2 gets turned into a 0. And now we don't need to include the decimal or, zero, or the 1 because it's, it does not have any value at all. Okay. Now the next factor is 15. We want to round that to the largest place value. Underline our 1, circle our 5. 5 is obviously 5 or greater, so we change that 1 into a 2. And then that 5 gets turned into a 0. So we have our factors rounded to 10 times 20. Now it's time to multiply. We underline our basic fact of 1 times 2. That's pretty simple. And then after this we have two zeros left over in our multiplication problem and what we do with those two zeros we want to tack those two zeros onto the end for a grand total of 200. Now let's take a look at the next problem first thing we will do is write it out. We have zero, whoops, zero and nine tenths times 25. Okay, I'll change inks to show you the different steps. Now this one can be a little tricky. However, we're still going to round to that largest place value. So we have zero and nine tenths. We're going to round this to the ones place. We look at that 0, and then we look at that 9, which is obviously 5 or greater. So because that 9 is 5 or greater, we're going to bump 1 up to that 0, making it a 1. Pretty simple there. Okay, now we look at our 25. We're going to round it to the tens place. So we're going to look at that 5 in the ones place. That's obviously 5 or greater, so we're going to bump, we're going to bump 1 up to that 2, making it a 3 for 30. Okay, then we can multiply this problem out. Pretty simple. 1 times 30 is going to give me 30, but if we want to follow the steps of basic facts, 1 times 3 gives me 3. And we can tack on our 0 at the end for 30. Okay, what I want you to do now is pause this video, and I want you to work these problems out. And when you're finished working these problems out, you can press play, and I will have the answers for you. So I want you to pause the video now. Okay, so here are the answers for you. We have, first of all, 138 and 65 hundredths times 18. We round our 138 to 100, or 18 to 20, okay, which gives us a total of 2,000. The next problem, 31 times 3 and 55 hundredths, we rounded that 
31 to a 30, rounded that 3 and 55 hundredths to 4, giving us a grand total of 120. And finally, 89 and 6 tenths times 24. We rewrote, you can see that I rewrote that 89 and 6 tenths times 24 horizontally, making it a little bit easier. I rounded that 89 and 6 tenths to 90, the 24 to 20, giving me a grand total of 1,800. So this is how you estimate decimals. It's important to remember that key tip that we talked about at the very beginning. Whenever you round, you will only ever have one digit with any type of value. Okay, You won't have multiple digits with value in each number, just one digit. As you can see, all these digits just have, all these numbers just have one digit with any value. Everything is either a zero or it's just a single digit. Okay, so please come and see me if you have any questions about estimating decimals.